Sir, let's start. Uh, good evening, everyone. Today here uh, we are here for uh, the Radha Govindu Pal Radha Vinod Pal uh, lecture series. Four, and this is lecture number four to be given by an eminent lawyer of the Calcutta High Court, Mr. Firoz Adulji. Mr. Firoz Adulji has been a graduate of National Law School, Bangalore, and he has been practicing law in Calcutta High Court since the last 22 years. He has been a champion in uh, litigations relating to civil liberties and other liberties and has been helping out downtrodden people. And today his topic is artificial intelligence in a smarter legal system where he will give a lecture on such artificial system in the in the smarter legal system i now hand over the mic to mr pro adilji advocate to give a lecture on this mr adilji kindly begin your lecture good evening sadat good evening everyone it's a pleasure to be a part of this lecture series and an honor too with regard to artificial intelligence and a smarter legal system, it was about five years back that a great friend of mine, Oshin from the UK, had warned me that in the future, artificial intelligence will take over the legal system. And this pandemic itself has shown that artificial intelligence is here to stay forever. The late Arun Jaitley ji, in his last budget speech, as the finance minister mandated the Niti IO to devise a national policy on artificial intelligence. In pursuance of the direction issued by the former finance minister, Arun Jaitley ji, Niti IO had released a discussion paper recommending a national policy on AI. It also highlighted the core areas of the application of this technology, which included healthcare, smart mobility, transport, education, agriculture, infrastructure, and smart cities. The paper has extracted the core issues plaguing artificial intelligence in these sectors and subsequently proposed a methodology of curbing those problems using artificial intelligence. With the aim to aid the development of solutions based on artificial intelligence, the government has launched a dedicated portal for artificial intelligence. The platform will act as a one-stop digital platform for artificial intelligence-related developments in India, sharing of resources, details of startups, investment funds in AI, companies and educational institutions relating to artificial intelligence in India. The portal was launched by Ravi Shankar Prasadji, Union Minister of Electronics, IT, Communication and Law and Justice to mark the first anniversary of the second tenure of the present government. India's National Artificial Intelligence Portal has been jointly developed by the Ministry of Electronics and IT and the IT industry body NASCOM. The government also launched a national program for the youth called Responsible Artificial Intelligence for the Youth, which is aimed at empowering the young students of this country with appropriate new age tech mindset relevant artificial intelligence skill sets and access to required artificial intelligence tool sets to make them digitally, digitally ready for the future. The reason I began this with this piece of information is that the central government is extremely, extremely serious about artificial intelligence, which is the future. And the legal education system in our country needs to now begin incorporating artificial intelligence in its educational module. The legal system, which in my opinion has been lacking so far, needs to really wake up with regard to artificial intelligence. Or as this pandemic has shown, with regard to persons who are not digitally savvy, have been facing a lot of problems <coughs> with regard to filing, Hello, et cetera. Let me take you back into time. My good friend, Advocate Jamshed Bistri, from Mumbai, who has done extensive work on introduction of video recording of court proceedings 
as also legal transcriptions of court arguments brought it to my notice a case decided by the Bombay High Court in the case of legendary freedom fighter Sri Bal Gangadhar Tilak on the 22nd of July 1908. Way back then, kindly note that there was legal transcription in the judgment of Sri Tilakji. Tilak was accused of sedition for publishing an article in the newspaper about the Maharatha warrior encouraging him to move against the British government. Countries like England, Canada, and USA, the court proceedings are not only live streamed, but also the transcript of such proceedings included in depositions is recorded and made available to the general public. However, Indian courts have been extremely, extremely slow in embarrassing te technology. That only in 2018, the Honorable Supreme Court of India allowed live streaming to be carried out in respect of cases of constitutional and national importance, having an impact on the public at large or on a large number of people in India. Perhaps the first case where live streaming was actually allowed was the one argued by me before the Calcutta High Court with regard to the rights of the Parsi woman who married a non-Parsi to enter the fire temple. Kindly note that even in this particular case, the particular division bench which heard the matter, the senior judge was extremely technology savvy and perhaps that is the only reason why this order was passed pre-pandemic. What is artificial intelligence? In 1956, John McCarthy, commonly known as the father of artificial intelligence, articulated his notion of what is called artificial intelligence in his first academic conference, famously known as the Dartmouth Conference. Later, Alan Turing, a great mathematician, introduced the idea of whether it is possible to make machines have the same ability to think and learn by itself. He was able to put his theories and questions into action by testing whether machines can think and operate like human beings. After a series of testings, which was later known as the Turing test, it turns out that it was possible to enable machines to think, operate, and learn just like us human beings. The Turing test uses the pragmatic approach, most something that is based on practical consideration rather than theoretical ones to be able to categorize if machines can respond as humans. The term artificial intelligence and the law was first used in the 1970s by Bushman and Hendrick. The period includes the throne Mahati significant taxman project, which was cons which concerned with the modeling of the majority and minority arguments in a US tax law case and Ronald Stamper's exploring legal project that attempted to provide a formal model of the norms that administered the organization in the United Kingdom. In 1980s, Carol Hafners did some path-breaking work in this field, which included work on conceptual retrieval and Annie Gardner's constitutional model is much discussed in jurisprudence, which helped differentiating between easy and hard case laws. In, the, in 1987 was a very important year for artificial intelligence. A periodic conference, the International Conference on Artificial Intelligence and the Law, ICAIL, was formed, which is contended to be the foundation of the artificial law, artificial intelligence and law community. This conference was the main place for announcing and developing ideas within artificial intelligence and the law, which later in 1991 led to the foundation of International Association for Artificial Intelligence and the Law. Examples in artificial intelligence and the law include Valentine's functional ontology. The term ontology refers to study of concepts. And since then, legal ontologies have become the topic of regular workshops at artificial intelligence and law conferences. What is artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence is a generic term that is used to describe the ability of computers to use artificial neurons. Modeled on the evolutionary human neuron, artificial neurons are, are used to build complex neural networks 
that do the job of intelligent processing large volumes of data and can be applied in multiple areas such as image processing, building recommendation engines for shopping or movies, predicting if loan accounts can turn into a bad debt, forensic audits for suspected money laundering, and in natural language understanding to analyze. In the context of dispensation of justice, the most relevant use of artificial intelligence would be using natural language understanding. But then what is natural language understanding? It is the ability to teach computers to comprehend human language. This is done by training computers on a large corpus of text using various algorithms. Natural language understanding can then be used to build tools for next summarization, question and answering, and in developing information retrieval conversational agents. The fact is computer, despite using artificial neurons, do not understand words the way we humans do. They understand only numbers in the form of matrices and vectors. Therefore, the question is, how do computers really comprehend human language and numbers? That is the splendor of mathematics in the natural language understanding. The, the mathematical models use neural networks to convert text Text can be either in the form of words or in the form of sentences to numbers and process them. These complex neural networks are designed to work on extremely high end computer processes that run on the cloud to decode the cinematic and cinematic meanings of words and sentences. These trained models can then be applied to downstream tasks such as text summarization, question answering information, retrieval conversational agents and this is called transfer learning there are two ways to apply the model to the task we have at hand today one way is to use pre-trained models for example models that may have already been trained like wikipedia and apply them with minimal changes or to train models right from the scratch the later option is more challenging than the former and requires a a brilliant understanding of three domains, mainly mathematics, programming, and most importantly, the domain. With the challenges that the language throws to us constantly, mathematics and computers are doing a commendable job to try to understand the human language and process in a manner that the learnings can be applied to tasks that involve contract management, retrieval information from a repository, answering users' questions based on judgments, summarizing a case history without losing its valuable information. All machines and software that use artificial intelligence behave and interact just like we human beings do. Just the way humans need time and experience to grow physically and mentally, artificial intelligence also needs a lot of time. It keeps developing with the experiences by storing data and applying it in the future with whenever necessary. Artificial intelligence technology has advanced leaps and bounds and developed a larger number of tools to solve the most difficult problems in computer science, that is logic, national language processing, control theory, search and optimization, probabilistic methods for uncertain reasoning, and many more. Prominent instances of the use of artificial intelligence include autonomous vehicles such as drones and self-driving cars, medical diagnosis, creating art such as poetry, proving mathematical theorems, playing games such as chess or go, search engines such as Google, online assistance such as Siri, image recognition in photograph, spam filtering, prediction of judicial decisions, and targeting online advertisements. With social media sites overtaking the television as a source of news for young people especially and, the, and new organizations increase reliance on social media platforms for generating distribution, major publishers now use artificial intelligence to post stories more effectively and generate higher volumes of traffic. The law regarding 
artificial intelligence that undoubtedly will stance terminator like threats if artificial intelligence keep thriving without any accountability the the law will need to assimilate the ties to this technological change in the near future orin ezoni proposes three laws for artificial intelligence regulation inspired in numbers if not in content by asic asimov's famous three law of robotics here's what ezoni has to say an artificial intelligence must be subject to full gamut of laws that apply to its human operator for example we do not want autonomous vehicles that drive through red lights or an artificial intelligence system that engages in cyberbullying stock manipulation or terrorist threats two an artificial intelligence system must clearly disclose that it is not human artificial intelligence system cannot retain or disclose confidential information without explex, explicit approval from the source of such information these rules which have been proposed do a nice job of placing out the things that we don't need artificial intelligence systems to be doing but that's easier part of deciding how to regulate artificial intelligence the harder part is figuring out who or what should be held legally responsible when artificial intelligence systems do those things which we don't want them to be doing should we hold the designers of the artificial artificial intelligence system accountable or the immediate operator or maybe the system itself no one will argue that the point that an autonomous car shouldn't run through red lights it is clear who should be held responsible when it does as zoni's opinion takes no discernible position on these issues the first rule simply seems to apply that the artificial intelligence system itself should be held responsible but since artificial intelligence systems are not legal persons that's they have no legal responsibility and would be a legal impossibility who is liable for the doings of the artificial intelligence laws are made to govern the human beings in their conduct and for governing machines that humans use such as cars computers mobile phones etc but what happens when those cars mobile phones computers etc other machines start using artificial intelligence and become like human beings who is liable for such doings that is the question which we need to get an answer for the field of artificial intelligence is growing rapidly every day we read new stories about introduction of artificial intelligence in machines there are robots with artificial intelligence to do paint jobs in industries surgeries in hospitals detecting bank frauds chatbots cut metal and to many other heavy duty jobs although we are unaware of it artificial intelligence systems are everywhere from bank applications to snapchat filters to handling mobile assistance etc with the growth of artificial intelligence with the research institutions and r&d giants pushing the boundaries for what artificial intelligence is capable of Furthermore, the next big target of these these research and development giants is to tackle reinforcement learning, which is training methodology that allows AI models to learn from their previous mistakes and past experiences. Research has shown that artificial intelligence models are achieving positive results in reinforcement learning. Perhaps the first case was Jones versus W and M Automation Incorporation, a case from New York State in the year 2007, did not find the defendant liable when a robotic gantry loading system injured a worker, because the court found that the manufacturer that the manufacturer had complied with all the regulations. But in reinforcement learning, there is no fault of humans and no possibility of the of the injury that is to be caused. so traditional tort law would say that the developer is not liable that certainly will pose a terminator like change 
if artificial intelligence keep proliferating without any responsibility. Another example which I would like to cite is of a Swiss art group created an automated shopping robot with the purpose of committing random darknet purchases. The robot managed to purchase several items, including a Hungarian passport, before it was arrested by the Swiss police. The aftermath result is that there were no charges against the robot, nor the artists behind the robot. With such developments and research in artificial intelligence, the law needs to amend as per the technological changes in the near future. And artificial intelligence by design is artificial. And thus, ideas such as liability appear meaningless. A criminal courtroom would be incompatible with artificial intelligence unless the developer is intending to create harm, which would be its own crime. But really the question is whether artificial intelligence should be liable if something goes wrong and someone gets hurt. We don't regulate non-human behavior like animals or plants or other parts of nature. If a bee stings you, bees aren't liable for stinging you, aren't, isn't it? After considering the, the ability of the court system, the most likely reality is that the world will need to adopt to a standard of artificial intelligence where the manufacturers and creators agree to abide by general ethical principles such as a thorough technical guideline mandated by Indian laws, treaty or international regulation. And this standard will be functional only when it is foreseeable that the algorithms and the data can cause harm also. What if AI were to have a legal responsibility for the actions, then it would have a physical, legal, and digital identity similar to that of a human being. Shouldn't it also have the same legal rights of a human being? This is for the future legislators to decide to bring about a comprehensive legal re regime, especially in India, to regulate artificial intelligence. Today, we are almost at war with China. And it is a, a very sad day for us. But even on this day, I would still cite the Chinese example because China today is really, really far ahead of us as far as artificial intelligence and the law is concerned. In China, they have the concept of artificial intelligence courts, which are, are on the basis of complete artificial intelligence and even the judge is an AI. In August 2017, the Supreme Court Peoples of China established the first internet court at Hanzhou, China. Hanzhou is the headquarters of Alibaba, China's largest e-commerce company and also the most prosperous city in China's e-commerce industry. Alibaba is involved in an extremely large number of e-commerce disputes every year. And the courts in Hanzhou are already dealing with these disputes. So the Su Supreme Court of China established the first internet court at Hanzhou. The Supreme Court of China hopes to explore litigation rules to hear internet related cases on the basis of the Hanzhou International Internet Court. As the Hanzhou Internet Court has been making great progress, the Supreme Court of China established the Beijing Internet Court and the Hanzhou Internet Court in Beijing and Hanzhou, respectively. According to the provisions of the Supreme Court of China on several issues concerning the trial of cases by Internet Courts, the courts have jurisdiction over the following first instance civil and administrative internet related cases contractual disputes over online shopping services and financial loans online copyright disputes disputes over internet domain names disputes over using the internet to infringe on others personal and property rights disputes over product liability as a result of online shopping internet related public interest lawsuits administrative litigation arising out of administrative internet management of the administrative organs. Most of the evidence in these cases heard by the internet courts is electronic data and is stored on the internet. Therefore, the Supreme Court of China attempts to examine the authenticity 
of the processes by which the electric data is generated, collected, stored, and transmitted through technical means and relevant mechanisms. For example, if a party collects and fixes electronic evidence through electronic signatures, trusted timestamps, hash verifications, and blockchain, the internet court can rely on the above mentioned method to verify the authenticity of such evidence. This brings us to the next question. What is blockchain? Blockchain is literally a chain of digital blocks. It is the, it is the system of storing digital information, the block, in a public database, the chain. Blockchain preserves information about transactions like the date, time, purchase amount, etc. A classical illustration would be a purchase on Amazon. It contains a series of transactions which are recorded and kept on a digital platform. Each block added to the chain comes into the public domain, which where it is remains preserved. The critical question that we have to ask ourselves today is that is blockchain tamper proof? Is alteration of its data impossible by human intervention? At least I don't think so. But the Supreme Court of China thinks that it is tamper proof. The Supreme Court of China requires that all online trials should be in compliance with principles of trial in person and direct speech principle. So the court should hold a trial with the help of the online video system rather than solely relying on graphic or vocal communication. Where any litigant that fails to appreciate in an online trial on time will be deemed as refusing to appear in court unless a network, network failure, equipment trouble, power interruption, or other force major events occur. And where a litigant quits on an ongoing trial without permission, it will be deemed as retreating during the court session without permission. Internet courts will also serve litig litigating instruments and evidential material provided by the other side of the litigants through the Supreme Court of China operated judicial process information online. The litigation platform operated by itself through short messages, fax, emails, instant messaging accounts, or by other electronic means. The average duration, and you, everybody should be surprised, of these online trials is about 28 minutes. And the average processing period from, fi from filing to trial and conclusion is about 38 days. However, the Hanzhou Internet Court has also been criticized for its lack of impartiality, and very correctly so. Hanzhou Internet Court is technically supported by Gandao Company. The company states that it is invested by a company controlled by the Hanzhou municipal government and is technically supported by the Alibaba group. In other words, the technology of Hanzhou Internet Court derives from the Alibaba group. However, Alibaba and its subsidiaries, such as Tabo, are related to most internet disputes in Hanzhou. For example, Alibaba and its subsidiaries are either the plaintiffs or defendants of these cases. Therefore, there are public doubts as to whether Hanzhou Internet Court can maintain its indep independence in light of the fact that Alibaba Group controls it completely. The next question that, that arises is that will artificial intelligence replace human judges? Artificial intelligence should not try to replace human judges, but build intelligent artificial assistants that can help the judge with access to relevant information from the huge data spread over voluminous records without providing any recommendations. The question would arise sooner or later is this. Are we ready to replace judges with artificial intelligence driven programs to deliver judgments? With proper legal grooming and advocate data being made available, it may be possible. But the question would arise if that do we need a human element in adjudication process or can it be left to machines only? Artificial intelligence can be a tool in the hands of judges, but cannot replace the human touch, which is essential for delivery of justice. For can a complex criminal trial be decided by, by artificial intelligence? The answer as of today, and I say as of today, 
is a big no. What does artificial intelligence have for the future of lawyers of this country? And especially when I say this, it's about the law students who are there. Artificial intelligence creates a very dark future as far as lawyers are concerned. Because lot, a lot of lawyers are not going to be having jobs in the future. In the judiciary, artificial intelligence facilitates the legal team to concentrate more on crucial and strategic work by automating certain mundane processes. As per a report made by McKenzie, 22% of lawyers' jobs can now be automated. Indian judiciary has been facing a shortage of judges and an increasing number of pending cases in different courts. An AI-based system specifically designed for a particular judicial task would prove to be very effective in assisting the judges with making decisions, thus enabling them to achieve their targets smoothly. Justice Sharad Arvind Bobde, the Chief Justice of India, while addressing at the Constitution Day function, organized by the Supreme Court Bar Association on 26 November 2019, already expressed his intent to adopt an artificial intelligence-based system in the Supreme Court in a limited and controlled matter. Justice Bobe said, and I quote, with propose to introduce, if possible, a system of artificial intelligence, there may be certain things which we need to look at before we introduce. We do not want to give an impression that this is ever going to substitute the judges. But there are certain apprehensions associated with its use in the judiciary, which needs to be addressed before its adoption to such an extent. One such apprehension is that the judiciary's accountability may be reduced to the incomprehensibility of the artificial intelligence-based system. Another such apprehension is the possibility of having an automation bias of produce. Though the benefits of adopting an artificial intelligence-based system to a great extent in the judiciary seems tempting as it promises to improve its efficiency drastically. As of now, it should be utilized to limited extent only for assisting judges that too, only after thorough scrutiny. In a landmark study by the researchers of Stanford Law School, Drew Law and University of Southern California, it was observed that AI-based system LogX outperformed a team of 20 renowned lawyers of the United States of America, having decades of legal experience in the task to spot issues in five non-disclosure agreements. The, the LogX attained an average accuracy of 94%. Whereas the lawyers managed, and you would be shocked, only 85%. The most interesting fact about LogX is that it took only 26 seconds, tiny note, 26 seconds to finish this task, while the lawyers took 92 minutes on an average for the same job. Professor Gillen Healthy, Professor of Law and Economics at the University of South California, has stated that. Artificial intelligence can help solve both the problems of contract management and people development by making contract management faster and more reliable and freeing up resources so legal departments can focus on building the quality of the human legal systems. According to the same research, artificial intelligence has the pro and kindly note has the potential to disrupt the 6,000 billion global legal services industry. Artificial intelligence is definitely going to take away jobs from lawyers. Sundar Pachari, the CEO of Google, in the next decade, Google will shift from mobile first to artificial intelligence first. That's why Google Assistant is designed, which allows people to have a natural conversation between you and Google. Artificial intelligence could replace the jobs of office clerks, administrators, customer service representatives, analysts, and underwriters in the next decade. As per the data available, it is estimated that nearly one lakh legal related jobs will be automated by the year 2036 by artificial intelligence. There are a number of AI devices that are replacing jobs in the legal sector. 
For example, an Australian legal technical company has built an prototype virtual lawyer using Amazon Alexa that can create legal documents much faster than act an actual human lawyer. Major law firms all across the world are using artificial intelligence learning as machines can look over thousands of reports and locate the applicable data for a case much faster than a human can. Artificial intelligence is also coming a great way in predicting of how the mind of a judge works. For example, for us today to understand the, the working of the mind of a judge, we have to go through thousands of judgments of the, of the particular judge to come to a conclusion as to whether he is right centered, left centered, center centered, whichever way he, he is centered. But once this artificial intelligence program is developed at its next phase, what is going to happen is that the entire data is going to be feed it into, the, into that particular system. And data is going to come out to predict within seconds when a case goes before a particular judge, the predictability of either winning or losing the same. Today is a very important day for us because the Delhi government has given six crores for e-filing. It is really turning the system into a next generation process whereby everything is going to be automated. But my main concern is for the, the, the law students of my country. I specifically want that at least one year should now onwards be dedicated to artificial intelligence and the law, as far as law students are concerned. Because the entire legal system, due to this pandemic, is undergoing an upheaval. Kindly note that I was speaking to a friend of mine who I started this program with Jamshid Ministry, who, as I told you before, was into legal transactions as well as wanting videography of court proceedings. He says that is the past. We, he has been discussing with a lot of people and everybody has come to the opinion there is a pilot project which is going to come very soon and sooner or later right from the trial court to the supreme court everything is going to get completely digitalized the con the concept is very good but the problem is the access to the justice to the poor that is my real concern will artificial intelligence help access to justice for the poor the downtrodden the people on the street who actually require justice and not for people who are in the, in the AC rooms like you and me. Will this happen? Only time will tell. But one thing is for sure, as Jamshid Mishri continuously tells me, and I speak to him very, very often, he is extremely technologically savvy, is that the Supreme Court has taken upon itself to ensure that within a few months, we are going to have a pilot project where even lawyers are going to be trained to use artificial intelligence, to use technology, to make this legal system smarter. Kindly be ready for the next level of AI as and when it comes into our systems. Thank you. Siddharth? Siddharth, hello? Hello everyone. Thank yes. You. Thank you, Mr. Edelji, for giving such a nice lecture. It was a pleasure, Siddharth. It was a pleasure. All artificial intelligence and law. We have been classmates in National Law School for five years. And it's a pleasure having you to discuss about artificial intelligence, its applicability, and also the Indian scenario, how the court and how the Supreme Court particularly is trying to incorporate artificial intelligence into the day-to-day -day judicial proceedings. Thank you. And if anybody has any questions, one or two questions you can take up, but not many, many questions uh, because time is of a constraint. If nobody has any questions, then we can wrap up this. Sir, may I? Yes, please do. Tell me. Uh, sir, uh, there is a British Nationality Act, which was uh, 
coded in a programming language by some coders of uh, british uh, research university i would also like to share that if that is permitted file sharing is permitted but entire british nationality act was coded into a programming language so probably okay. that was the first you are, talk, you are talking about the british nationality act of 1948 uh i i don't remember the year but yeah okay. it is british nationality act so it was okay. coded and probably that was the first step in the direction of uh, uh, codifying the law because the problem that we are facing with uh, the legal language is that it is human defined language and it is subject to multiple interpretation Correct. so sir my only limited question is like uh, i'm i'm myself a computer engineer and a lawyer so i actively okay. take interest in this area uh, that's great i always think about some schema like in computer science there is a schema to say something that is called xml so there is a legal xml schema which is being developed at international level and consensus is emerging so can you shed some light about that schema being evolved legal xml sir you see you see ai till now has not been codified completely but i yeah. can tell you one thing that we if we have to be ready for the future if we are not ready for the future my friend Correct. we are in great trouble because Absolutely. remember today the problem with china is our the the level of export the import export imbalance and that is going to come into the legal field also Correct. what i have been continuously telling everybody that if you are not ready for the future we are going to be in serious problem because these chinese will be taking away our jobs as far as lawyers are concerned also once the process gets automated and you are an engineer you will know very well right. i don't need to go to a law firm yes i don't need i i i just have to buy the contract and don't forget that we are not learning cantonese or the chinese language but they have learned english and they right. are they are in the process of artificial they are far ahead of us in artificial intelligence as far as the law is concerned true but uh, that there is no doubt about it and if we don't get ready for the future we are in serious problem absolutely a lot of our industries have been taken over by china and this is one place which they are eyeing us let me tell you and is you you know that the indian legal industry is a multi billion dollar industry and yeah. if and in the future if we are not ready and, and the reason why i am continuously stressing is that we as an engineer you would know we need to teach our law students artificial intelligence because if we Absolutely. don't in yes. the future they will be jobless so it is sad what i'm saying today maybe i may be wrong i don't yes. know but my prediction is in the next 5 years itself as for what me and jamshid were discussing it's going to be an such an upheaval that you have to you will wait and watch and see true any other questions we may take one or two more questions if anybody has any other questions shall we wrap up the program now sir yes uh, i think uh, we are done thank you for such a nice lecture on artificial intelligence thank you very much mr lai oh, thank you thank you mr adil ji thank you very much it's all been a pleasure thank you thank you